Hi, Joe Alden, MD here, also known as Dr. Bones of the survival website doomandbloom.net, co-author of the Book Excellence Award-winning fourth edition of the Survival Medicine Handbook and designer of quality medical kits at store.doomandbloom.net. Recently, there was a chemical emergency caused by the derailment of a train in Ohio. The Environmental Protection Agency reported that there were hazardous materials, including 115,000 gallons of toxic vinyl chloride, in addition to other chemicals that spilled. Shortly thereafter, the officials decided to actually set the vinyl chloride on fire, leading to even more health hazards for the surrounding community. It's been several years since I've written about inadvertent chemical spills or even deliberate chemical attacks, but you might agree that in today's modern world, it isn't easy to avoid exposure to toxic chemicals. Therefore, everyone should have an idea of what to do if contamination occurs. There are many toxic chemical agents, and the response to a chemical emergency depends on the substance involved. Each agent has a different effect on the human body. The list of dangerous chemical agents is, well, that's a pretty long one, and it includes acids, bases, choking agents, blistering agents, blood thinning agents, nerve agents, many, many, many more. Chemical agents are largely prohibited by the Chemical Weapons Convention, the CWC. That's a treaty that outlaws their production and use. Although almost all nations have signed this treaty, the risk of chemical attacks still exists. The deliberate use of lethal chemicals dates all the way back to the first poison-tipped arrow. Historical examples of substances used to cause mass casualties abound. The ancient Greeks, for example, commonly poisoned the water supply of besieged cities and on occasion would even use sulfur fumes on defending forces. The invention of tear gas in 1912 came just in time for World War I. From 1914 to 1918, both sides used chlorine, sulfur mustard, and phosgene, causing 1.3 million chemical casualties and close to 100,000 deaths. Although not used on the battlefield in World War II, hydrogen cyanide gas, known as Zyklon B, killed millions of civilians during the Holocaust. In Vietnam, incendiary chemicals like napalm and herbicides like Agent Orange caused deaths and long-term ill effects. Chemical weapons actually have even been used as recently as 2017 in Syria. So what to do in chemical emergencies? Massive chemical accidents, such as occurred in the train derailment, dictate evacuation as the wisest course of action. What a surprise, huh? Not only to prevent physical contact, but also to avoid noxious fumes that may be carried by the winds. Always be sure to seek and act upon the specific advice of local emergency departments for a particular event. Evacuation may involve going to an emergency shelter. If so, notify others where you're going and take additional supplies and medications that the shelter may not have in sufficient quantities. You should know what their policy is regarding pets. They may not be equipped to handle them. If you've got kids in schools, be aware of their disaster protocols. To absorb a small organic acid or base spill, you can use commercial neutralizers like FASTACT, F-A-S-T-A-C-T. Another option is a homemade mixture of equal parts unscented kitty litter, baking soda, and dry sand. Works for most chemical spills. Another option is to absorb certain spills with garden vermiculite, sand, and absorbent pads or pillows to suppress toxic vapors. If you can't leave your home, choose a room with as few windows and doors as possible. Some gases sink to the floor, so a second story room is preferable. Notice how different this strategy is from most natural disaster plans, like for tornadoes, where the basement might be the safest area in the home. Shut all outside doors and windows as soon as you're aware of the emergency. Taping around the frames will make a better seal, and you should also turn off all air conditioners, fans, and heaters, and close vents or anywhere that air can enter from outside. Get to your safe room and shut the door. Turn on the radio, keep a cell phone handy, and drink only safely stored water, not water from the tap. Shutting off the valve to your house may actually may help avoid contaminating the existing water in the pipes. If you run out of water, you can drink from the toilet tank, but not from the bowl, or release some from the hot water heater. Although sheltering at home is arguably an option, sheltering in a vehicle really isn't. Vehicles aren't airtight enough to protect you from noxious fumes. Some types of chemical exposure involve direct contact. As many substances, especially in liquid or solid form, can penetrate clothing and be absorbed through the skin, take off any that could possibly be contaminated. A thorough body wash with soap and water is then needed to protect both the victim and medical personnel. The faster this is accomplished, the more effective the decontamination. When taking off chemical-drenched clothing, avoid pulling it over your head. Cut it off instead. 
when removing clothing from others, make every effort to avoid touching contaminated areas without hand protection like, let's say, rubber kitchen gloves or other methods that avoid contact with your skin. Place the items in a biohazard bag and seal it. Eye damage from chemical exposure can be very severe, so you want to remove any contact lenses and cleanse the eyes with clean water for 10 to 15 minutes. Hold the eyelids away from the eyeball while moving the eye in all directions. Wash eyeglasses with soap and water. With any luck, a chemical emergency will last only a short time. Despite this, your shelter should have the usual basics, a good medical kit, radio, bottled water, food, but also some other materials. They include things like rubber or other chemically resistant gloves, aprons, and boots, brooms and dustpans, safety goggles, shovels, plastic spatulas, biohazard bags, five-gallon buckets with lids, baking soda, dry sand, and vermiculite. And by the way, gas masks. Note that respirator masks like the N95 are insufficient to protect against noxious chemicals and gases. Hopefully you'll never be involved in a major chemical emergency, but it's the responsibility of the survival medic to know about any crisis they may face in times of trouble. This is Joe Alton, MD, that old Dr. Bones, wishing you the best of health in good times or bad. Thanks for watching. Hey, support our mission to medically prepare families by getting some of the quality medical kits, individual supplies, and personal protection gear available at store.doomandbloom.net. You'll be glad you did.